Today we're going to talk about another topic dealing with Power Apps and Dynamics 365. Okay, so if you're used to dealing with finance and operations, supply chain management, you know, finance modules, you're used to dealing with companies, and we need to deal with those companies inside of our Power App as well. If we don't, we're going to create problems for our users and, and basically create an experience the user is not used to, right? So let's take a look at what I'm talking about here. If we flip over to Power Apps, I've created a kind of a, a quick Power App here for us. Um, and I've added a gallery here. And this gallery is just a um, it's just a customer's gallery, right? So if we look at this, this gallery, let's scroll through it. Notice that, you know, we've got the USSI company in here. Um, let me scroll down here and, and we'll see some other companies that'll, that'll start showing up. So then you've also got USMF. You basically have all of the different companies for that customer. So this is just a customer entity. So, so it's going to show you all the different companies for that particular customer. All right. So it even becomes more exaggerated. If we come in here and let's, let's go ahead and put a filter on our gallery. So I'm going to go ahead and put a filter here. Um, and let's filter this on just um, our customer account. Uh, and we'll, we'll, where the customer account is equal to um, US-004. This is where you'll really kind of notice it here when this runs. Um, so we'll click on that. So there we have the two customers here. So these are two different customers that are with different companies, right? So you're probably going to want to filter out the records that you get based on company. You're not really going to want to list, or probably in most circumstances, you're not going to want to list every single um, company uh, in an entity for, for a, when you're writing a power app, okay? So let's talk about how we can do that and how we will do this. So we're going to do this in kind of a two-step process, and we're going to do it when the app loads. So we're going to, it's, it's a good idea to only do this one time during the app, you know, do a quick inquiry as far as what the customer's default company is and save that into a variable. And that's kind of what we're going to do. And just so you know, what we're, what we're going to do is if I click over here on finance and operations and I go over to your user options and then their preferences, this is the company that I'm talking about here. This is going to be kind of their startup company. I'm going to, just their default company that we, we're going to get um, there. Okay. So Let's go ahead and, and see how we're going to do that. Now, what we want to do is we want to do this on the actual app, and then there's a there's a on start function here. So basically, when the app loads, we want to get this uh, get the user company, and then we're going to put that in a variable, and then use that in other places in our app. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do there's there's a kind of a, a an initial um, thing we're going to get is the email address of the current user. So, the, so we're going to use that email address of the user, and then we're going to query the user's table to get their uh, startup company, right? So to get the current user's email, what we're going to do is we're going to set a variable, and we're going to call that user email. And then we want to set that to um, user. And, and so this user function has got a couple different options we can use, and this is the current user. And so we can get their email, their full name, or, or their image, right? But what we want is we're going to get the email, all right? So we're going to going to save that into that variable. So what we've done here with this statement is we've got we're going to set this user email variable uh, to the the current user's email address. And let's just kind of we'll we'll create a um, a label down here just to kind of show the email. Let me span this out here so it'll all fit. And so in text, what we're going to do is we're going to put user email there like that. And then, so the thing we need to do to get this to populate, if we come up here to the app again and right click, we want to run the on start so it's acting like it's starting up. And then you'll see that it's going to put in my email address there. Okay. All right. So the next step is going to, we're going to need to get the user's company is going to be our next step here. So what we want to do here is we're going to go into our power apps and let's go ahead and hit the gear icon and let's go into advanced settings and I'm going to show you how I'm using virtual entities and how I would turn on an entity, a virtual entity here. All right. So I've got in my advanced settings, I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to go ahead and, and select on the drop down. I'm going to look for, and I want to look for available finance and operation entities. 
And then I'm going to look for the name where well, the name contains user, right? And then we'll hit the results button. And what it'll do is it'll filter down and put in our results. So again, I'll put in the link to the how to install virtual entities below in the video below if you're if you're curious. And what you want is you want this system user entity. Now notice I've already got it turned on, but to turn it on, you just click on it here, and you, there'll be a checkbox here that you'll that'll load here in just a second, and you'll check that and then save and close, and that will turn that virtual entity on. All right. So once you turn that virtual entity on, if we go ahead and take a look at our tables here in, in our Power Apps, make sure you have your, your uh, filter set to all. And all the virtual entities have MS ERP in them. So you can search for MS ERP and we have our user information uh, table here referenced, all right? So we can use that on our app. The one thing we wanna make sure that we have set is if we go over here to data, Make sure you have, you've added that table here. So to do that, you're just going to hit add data and add the table. You should see it show up here. All right. So now we can use that. So we've got our user email in a variable and we have our table with our user information in it. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do a shift and enter and add a new line. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set a variable called user company. All right, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a lookup function. So we're going to do a lookup in, in the table called uh, user information. And it's this one here, user information. And then next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in the criteria that we want to look for. So if we start typing email, the one we want is this MSERP alias. So we're going to click on that. We want where that email address equals our user email that this is the, the variable that we set up above, so up here. And then we're gonna close that lookup out. Now, what we'd have to do here is we have to specify what field on this lookup we wanna return and set that uh, user company to. And what we wanna set that to, we wanna put a dot, and then we wanna set it to company, right? So that lookup function is gonna return that one field, which is company, and we're gonna close out our set parameter there, okay? So let me minimize that for a second. Let's go ahead and add another label up here just so we can see what's going on. So now on this label, if we go ahead and put in our user company, there we go, set that. And let's go ahead and we'll go back here and we'll run our on start again. Run on start. And then there now we have our company. So I'm assigned to the USMF company. All right, so now that we have our variable set here, so we've got our USMF. Let's go and flip back over to finance and operations. Let's change that for a second. So let's go back to our, our user options and we'll go to our preferences. And let's change that to just to a different company. Let's just change it to USSI. There we go, we'll save that and we'll close that. And now if we come back over to our app, go right click on that and do our run start. Notice it's changing it to USSI. So anytime it starts, it's gonna change the uh, change the company. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna flip back over on it. I want that to be in USMF for my for my demo here. So we're gonna go back to user options, preferences, and let's just change that to back to USMF. Oop, went past it, uh, right there. Gonna save that and close that. And let's just do a run on start again and we should see it change for us. There it goes. Okay, so we change it back to USMF. All right, so remember, you know, the whole point of this was to filter our gallery down. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our gallery here. So let me click on our gallery. And what we want to do is we want to filter our gallery, including this uh, company here, all right? So what we can do here is we can go back down to our items. And let's put, let's, we'll leave the customer and we're just going to go and we'll do an and. Um, what we want to use here is company code. So we're going to put a single quote and just look for company code. There we go, company code. And we want to get that where it's equal to that user company variable that we created right there. Close that off. Yeah, let's click out of it for a second, see if that works for us. And there we have Cave Wholesales USMF. All right, so we can now we can remove, go ahead and remove the the and and the because we don't really need to filter on the account here. 
Let's go ahead and just take that out for a second. And uh, let's click off of it. And now we should see every single um, customer here is going to be with that USMF company. Okay. So obviously there's a couple other things. This is a complete solution. So there's a few other things that you need to do. Um, one of those is you, you probably want to create a drop down somewhere in your app for companies so the user can switch the companies there and you populate your drop down from the company's entity. Um, another thing that you might want to do is, you know, what if the user isn't in the um, finance and operations database for, as a user? So you probably want to put some kind of if condition around that and throw, you know, either a pop-up. I'll put a link to the video that I did on pop-ups. Or, you know, perhaps you want to create a notification. I'll put a link to that video there. I've done a notification video as well. So you want to kind of put some, some kind of guardrails around it so if... If the user doesn't exist in, in uh, finance and operations, you can throw, throw an error and, and show the user that it, um, that it doesn't exist so that uh, your filters in other places in the app don't get messed up, okay? All right, so today what we've done is we've taken a look at how we can retrieve the, the user's default company from finance and operations and use that to filter data within the app, okay? So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found some value in this and, 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 and can use this in your Power Apps. So if you did, please give it a like or a thumbs up. That just helps me on the distribution of the video. And also I put out one of these, one of these videos out about once a week. So feel free to subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way you'll get notified when I upload a new video, okay? So again, I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, thanks for watching. See you later, bye.